Hey, so working remote over the last couple of years has kind of become the standard and it's probably not going away anytime soon. So in this video, I'm gonna show you the tips and tricks that I've learned from years of working remote so that you are more effective, productive, and efficient whenever you're working remotely or working with other people who are remote. Hey, what's going on? I am Will from DevOps for Developers. And so the ideal situation when you're working remote is to provide the illusion that you're not really remote at all. So now technology has given us a lot of tools to make that possible, but like kind of the thing to understand here is that while technology makes it possible, we're still kind of tribal by nature, right? I mean, after all, when you strip everything away, we're still just hairless monkeys on a rock flying through space. So not everyone that you're working with is gonna be as comfortable working remote as you are. And so by providing the illusion that you're not really remote, you're gonna make that transition for them a lot easier. So now, when you think about working remote, you might instantly jump to thinking about how to improve the video quality, but actually the best thing that you can do is to improve your audio quality first. Because if you have great audio, but the video is lagging, then you're still gonna be able to carry on a conversation, but the inverse of that isn't true. Right, if you have great video, but horrible sounding audio, doesn't matter what you're saying, I can't hear you, and unless I can read lips, nothing is gonna change that. So you wanna get the best mic that you can afford. This is the one that I use for um, conferencing with people all day long. It's the Heil PR40, and it's a couple hundred bucks, which can be expensive, right? And you don't have to get one that is that expensive, but I want you to get the best mic that you can afford because look at what's at stake here, right? Spending, you know, some money on a mic may be the make or break factor that determines whether you land that $60,000 a year job. So it's worth investing that money for the bigger payoff in the long run. The other thing that you wanna do is test this mic out and test how it works with your computer here and make sure that you know when you jump into a video conference you know, which mic your computer powers up and that it's working. Because the scenario you're trying to avoid here is like if you jump into a video conference and the first words that you say are, can you hear me? You've already broken the illusion. So use whatever services are out there, whether it's Zoom or Facebook Messenger or Discord chat or whatever, and do a couple trial runs with your friends so that you know when you jump into a video conference, you know exactly how your system responds and you can confidently start carrying on a conversation without having to go through the trial and error, can you hear me now thing. The next thing you wanna do is create an environment that is suitable for communicating remotely. Now, not everyone has a dedicated place in their home or their apartment where they can you know, go isolate themselves, but you wanna kinda of create a space where you can control a little bit of it and you can put that gear away at the end of the day so that work is gone and it's out of the mind. And then background noise is another thing too. You know, control the factors that you can. For example, if you live in the city, you probably can't do anything about the traffic noise outside aside from find a place in where you live where the noise is as quiet as possible. Um, but on the other hand, you know, if your roommate happens to be like a heavy metal guitarist or something, you can control that by coordinating that their practice time doesn't overlap with your job interview or your one-on-one -on -one with your manager. When it comes to video, again, much like audio is more important than video, lighting is actually much more important than the camera that you have as well. And whatever device you're using probably has a built-in webcam that most likely is gonna be just fine, especially if you just like step it up a notch with the lighting. For example, in this clip here, you can see where I've got the light right behind my camera for video conferences that lights up my face and makes it look like a better quality picture, right? And so I've got dedicated lighting for that, but you can use just whatever lighting happens to be around your house, whether that's a, an overhead light or a lamp or even the flashlight on your phone. 
the lighting will make a big difference in your video. So the final thing I wanna to touch on for working remotely is text-based communication because you'll end up doing a lot of it. And I want you to really think about the text messages that you type in and how you formulate that and really focus on putting one thought per message. You know, if we take a look at this screen clip here, you know, it's all these individual messages or individual fragments of thoughts that were sent as individual messages. So if you consider that from the recipient's perspective, I actually blew up their phone or their computer, you know, a dozen or so times with each different ping or vibration for those different thoughts. And it makes it really hard for them to focus on anything other than what the hell do you want, Will? Whenever I do that. And so text-based messages is not real time. So I want you to avoid the distraction to say, hi, Will, and then wait for a response and then say, how are you doing? And then wait for a response. Just say what you have to say. And I know for a lot of people, that's very much against their culture. You know, a lot of people are raised with the type of culture that it's just simply customary to have a personal conversation and, and talk with the human that you're interacting with before talking about the business side of the conversation. And I respect that and I understand that, but it just doesn't translate well in a text communication environment. So put that aside, state what you need to state, what you need out of that person, and then move on and they'll respond when they can. Okay, so let's wrap all of this up. Whenever it comes to setting up your environment to work remotely, your goal is to provide the illusion that you're not remote at all. And we do that by addressing things in this order. The first thing is getting good quality audio. Then we adjust our lighting for good video, upgrade our cameras if we need to. And finally, whenever we're doing text-based communication, we put one cohesive thought into a message and then send that message down the pipe. Hope you found that helpful. If you've got any other tips, be sure and let them, let them ride down in the uh, comments below and uh, I'll see y'all in the next video.